Welcome back. Well, yes, as you've seen, the Professor Rafai Alkali joins us next. He is the chairman of NMPP. Good morning, Prof. Thank you for coming. Good on morning, today, Chamberlain. Well, many are looking forward to, of course, when the campaigns will kick oh, off absolutely. and see how things will turn out. Sure. But, but lately, NMPP has been quiet. Well, what, what's going on? No, we have not been quiet. Oh, I'm surprised. Okay. Maybe we are moving channels. Well, maybe uh, I've not been uh, <laughs> keeping my ears close <laughs> to the ground enough. No, NMPP is working hard. We are planning, doing a lot of work. But, but um, NMPP has had some hiccups, uh, if we could describe it as such. How, you, how is the party going to cope or coping with that? Because having lost uh, uh, Malam Shekara, he's a significant member of the party. So how is the party moving on from that? No, I think uh, we have passed on. We have moved on. In the case of Ibrahim Shekara, we gave him the opportunity to become a senator on a platform. And uh, at some point, he decided to opt out. So already we are working on something else. And uh, remember that you can lose one and gain 10. So, so far, what we know is that virtually all the people he came with to NPP together, they have not joined him. They, they, they left alone. So I think we are good to go. He Ibrahim. left alone? Yes. But he, he didn't say he left alone. He, mean, he kept on saying that his supporters, well, his followers... That's what he said, but that is, uh, the facts on the ground are different. Mm. So you're telling us authoritatively that he left alone? Yes. Was, uh, yes. All his supporters are still in the NMPP? Yes, that's the truth, yes. So but when you say you lose one... There is and, something and, even that yeah. happened recently when I went to Kano, was it about two days ago? Mm -hmm. His Illo, who is married to his uh, daughter, was also came, he's still in, he came to NMPP. Still with... Did he, did he NMPP, join yes, NMPP or yeah. he's still in there? He, he, he joined NMPP. Well, when did he join? With, with Madam Shekara? No, yes, they are about. So he didn't leave? No, no, sir. You see... We have given Ibrahim Shekharao his respect, his due respect. Since he left, I have resisted the temptation to say anything bad against him. It's no use because uh, we are decent people. Uh, NMPP is a decent political party. We, we say we are not going to engage unless we are pushed for, uh, pushed too much. Otherwise, there is no need. Uh, politics is about choice, and uh, he has made his own choices. But I know that those choices are not the best for him because he's highly respected in Kano. But uh, he should have stayed on and fought the Nigerian project now. But he opted out for his own reasons. So I think uh, we as a party, we refuse to engage him. We want to, want to maintain the decency with which we are, we are on for. So what was the bone of contention? Because from his perspective, I mean, you heard what he said largely as to how uh, he didn't, there was no agreement. You didn't uh, Again, I think uh, it's a question him. of interest. So uh, that's why I said uh, the party does not want to go into all these unnecessary altercations and debate and arguments with him. It's a question of choice. You come for somebody to be in a political party. He made his choice to leave uh, APC before and came to us. And he decided to leave the uh, NMPP and go to another party, fine with us. But uh, since then, we have also gained, been gaining ground nationwide. But how is his movement to uh, his living to the PDP, how is it a bad choice for him? Honestly, I think if you understand where we are, and uh, I, the last time I came here, I didn't mention to you that uh, almost two years back, we sat down in a group, we look at Nigeria, we look at the political party, and we review them, analyze all of them, and uh, we concluded that as preparation for 2023 comes, general election, most of these political parties, especially the two majors at that time, are going to collapse, are going to find sufficient difficulties that they don't put their house in order, you know, to face the elections. Now look at what is happening. So how will you leave a party that is stable, organized, highly focused, into a party that you find already members there are fighting each other deadly? Yeah, but when you say the two parties will collapse, are they still going to, you think, do you still think they will collapse? Well, I don't know. Maybe when I say collapse, I think maybe people are thinking collapse like a building, collapsing on top of everybody. No. But what is happening? Is it the, did the, how this party started? Is it how they started? Yeah, but That's Prof, 22 years ago. <laughs> but probably you're a veteran in this. You, you've been there. You've seen different political parties have terrible issues that the whole country or those who are looking for but this but I think they, they will collapse. They were managed. But they survived it. Uh, Chamber, Chamber, they, they were managed. You know, there is what is happening. What is happening now in PDP is almost akin to what happened in 2013 when some governors during a national convention decided to just walk out of the national convention and since then 
the PD had a lot of difficulty as we were facing 2015 elections. Now this is what is all happening. Leading governors who have been also sacrificing for the party, working for the party, both those that are uh, serving governors and former governors are all moving out of the PDP. And uh, you are, these are the faces you are seeing outside. You don't know those are behind them. But as it is now with uh, NMPP and their position or strength in Kano State, hasn't that been whittled down with the not at movement all. of not Madam Shekharao? Maybe people understand the, the, what do you call, the, the concourse of phenomena in Nigeria, not only in Kano. Uh, this is a man who has built a career of helping people for a long time. Everywhere you go, you see his footprints. He, and uh, he is also labeled on principle. You know, he takes hard decision, difficult decision. When he realizes a journey is not working very well, he moves on. However difficult it is, he takes the leadership. And that's how we were able to evolve from uh, forming the national movement. And then uh, we do the matter with the NMPP. Last year, about this time, nobody would have given us a chance that we'd be talking here about NMPP. But today we are here. We have everything on the ground. We have our people moving around. And uh, maybe that's why I'm surprised you said that uh, we have been quiet, because you have been following the, what we call this, this the, the movement he has been doing around the country over the past uh, 30 to 40 days. Nigeria has changed. The country has changed. And we do it quietly and systematically, not, not making noise. But I thought that uh, some of these things, too, the people need to see why they should pitch their tents with NMPP. So if it's quietly, how do the people see when it? When we say quietly, it does not mean that uh, we are not there on the ground. Maybe you will see virtually all the cities, all the states that uh, our presidential candidate, Central Rabi Musa Concourse, visited, you find unprecedented reception. Large car coming from nowhere. People ordinarily who would have not come out for, for, to receive a guest, they come out and say it's for Concourse or it's for NMPP. And uh, the last, last place he went was uh, Casina about just two days ago. I hope you see the picture on Casina. So that is not silent uh, talk. But we are saying that since the campaign has not started, it's silent. That's the way, that I'm, trying, the way I'm putting it. So what is the, um, uh, because at the moment, Balam Shakarao's name is still on the sanitary ticket for the NMPP. Isn't that right? It is very odd. But you know, you know, sometimes uh, laws are made for men. It's not men made for laws. Uh, I think there must have been some, some, some lacuna in the Electoral Act. But only uh, before the final day of submission, the principle is that anybody who dies or voluntarily withdraws for contest, then he could be substituted. And uh, that was the principle we know. But after his name was submitted to the INEC, and uh, he withdrew, and uh, most of us felt it was like intent intended to hurt the party. His, his withdrawal? Uh, what he was, what? Yes, it was intended to hurt the party, because otherwise, why should he withdraw after uh, the, the gate has been closed? Well, in any case, we took it easy. And then we approached the INEC and told them that, well, this man has withdrawn. He even wrote a formal letter to INEC and said that he has withdrawn and informed them. And they also formed a letter, I wrote a letter to us withdrawn this candidature, and they also withdrawn his membership of the NMPP. Obviously, you cannot force somebody to be a member of the party. You cannot force him to be just stand for election under our platform. So we communicated to INEC, and they say, no, 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 that uh, only death that can now uh, compel them to remove his name. We say, no, no. So we are still uh, exploring all options to make sure that the kind of central centrality is not lost to us. Is that eventually going to include the party going to court to ensure that uh, the provisions are complied with? If it's a, it's a legitimate option, because even INEC knows that if, for example, they are, uh, their hands are tied down and they cannot do anything, then the, also, the option is only court. So wait, you're saying that INEC says, because I mean, the electoral act is clear on some of these procedures, if they withdraw, uh, you're supposed to have notified them and follow through all the processes. So you're saying that my next position at the moment is that nope, only death can warrant. Uh -huh. That's what we found because since if in the process for these primaries, mm -hmm. you do say and the law says that uh, it's either voluntary withdrawal mm -hmm. or death, then it means the same principle should apply if somebody withdraws after. So does Anik disagree with that? 
Well, so far, I think that's the impression I'm getting. We are getting at the party because we have been corresponding, and I don't want to just talk about this on yeah. the press. It's not fair. It's uh, people who are doing their work. And uh, like I said, if they are also, their hands are tied by law, by the Electoral Act, so be it. But as long uh, I know that ultimately the party will not allow uh, the seat to be left vacant. Or uh, at the, during the election, then uh, you find uh, Senator Ibrahim Shekaroshi appearing as a candidate of a party. It looks very odd. It's, simple, it's embarrassment even for the uh, INEC. So I believe there must be a lacuna if that is the issue that uh, is from the law that only the, only the person dies. But if somebody leaves the party, it's, what is it to him? It's, it's already lost to us. All right, let me bring so, that And it's on. not only that case. Yeah. We also have a similar case uh, in, 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 in Taraba. We also have a similar case in, in, in Yobe, where a deputy governor also resigned at the last minute and then joined another political party. So we have to replace them. There's no way a governor can run with one leg. So I think that is... Uh, I know INEC are doing a lot of work. But uh, I think the law also, the uh, National Assembly had to review it very much. So wait, is INEC maintaining the same stance on all those other situations, both the Taraba all and the other the, case the, the, Yes, yes, yes. Taraba and then the deputy governor in, uh, in, 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 in Yobi. Right now, uh, there's no way our candidate in, in, uh, government candidate in Yobi will just go around as individual alone. So alone, yeah, because the law says you have to have yes, the have to, to have, validate so we your are talking position. To INA, we, are there, we are exploring all options. And I think that's the best way to go about it, not to be talking too much with the media. Okay, mm -hmm. let me bring in my colleague in Lagos. He's got questions for you. Oh. Hiya. Well, thank you, Chamberlain. Well, uh, Prof, the, one of the provisions of the Electoral Act, you know, is uh, this that's ascribed, uh, attributed to the head of the legal department in INEC. Um, in Kano State, um, when he was taking up on this issue that we're discussing with you, he says, and I quote, the new electoral law said once your name was initially displayed before displaying the finalist, a candidate will write INEC officially, attach his photos, notifying the INEC of withdrawal from the contest. Mr. Shikarao did not do any of the above. So in this regard, I'm wondering if it was something that the NNPP also saw validity in discussing with him so that this angle of the provisions of the law were also met. We, I read this yesterday in the newspaper that the state uh, rec in Kano uh, it's mentioned something like this that um, Senator, Concos, uh, Senator Ibrahim Shekarao uh, did not write and uh, he did not indicate to them that uh, he was resigned. But I am surprised because he is talking from Kano, but the secretary of the party is talking to INEC headquarters, not talking to REC in Kano. And uh, we have uh, the letter from Senator Ibrahim Shekarao, which we first sent through our state chairman in Kano, and then we also got it. And then he also personally also wrote to INEC. Apart from that, he also spoke to the press that he did he take these steps. So I was even surprised that the wrecking can always say something different. Uh, so the fact of the matter is that we have written to INEC and we have told them our position and we told them our intention to replace the candidate in Kano. We cannot leave it vacant. Okay. Well, in the event, I mean, going back to the question that my colleague asked you, I mean, that we, we went to court, I mean, I, I, NNPP goes to court, and the court says, look, uh, it's past time and all of that before the amendment, because clearly the law can't be amended before the 2023 elections. Should the candidate of the NNPC be declared to have won, and they carries the name of Senator Ibrahim Shekarao. What happens? Well, he cannot uh, claim it legitimately because he has already abandoned it even before the elections. So definitely, he cannot now rip from where he has not sown. Okay, but, you know, there are also questions around, I mean, the issues that you also raised, that the same thing is happening in other parts of the country, you know, that people who have already become candidates or substantiated in INEX reg records and just suddenly leaving. Is there anything you can trace to why these things are happening as the chairman of the party? For example, in the case of, uh, I wanted to mention the one of Taraba, is also another friend of ours, uh, Senator Joel. He also uh, got the seat uh, and then later on left 
and now joined Labour Party. Uh, and then he's now a candidate of the Labour Party as a government candidate in Taraba State. And he's very odd. And now already in the list that was released by INEC, he still appeared as our central candidate in, 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 in Taraba State. So uh, what we are saying here is that, again, we cannot force Joel to be a, a central candidate in Taraba State. We have to be replaced. So wherever the problem lies, we are following diligently because we also have lawyers working with them. We also have uh, the electoral uh, uh, law with us. So we are fairly informed. The point is that we follow it to this logical conclusion. And this is not a, a fight, you know, an open fight in the press. No, no, no. I don't want to engage in media or with anybody at all. Mm. No. Well, Prof, the question that I'm asking is, why do you think it is happening? People who have been so invested in the party, such that the party infrastructure says, you will be our candidate. They get the, 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 the tickets of the party, and then they leave the party. While there are other parties where they don't have the, 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 the ticket of the party, and they are fighting tooth and nail to, to get it. Meanwhile, in the NNPC, in the NNPP, they have the, the, the tickets, and then they still have sconed. So the question is, why, in your opinion, would this be happening? I think this question is, uh, can only be asked those people who left the party, not for us, because you don't know what they are thinking behind that. But what I know is that if somebody is given a senatorial seat and then he wants to leave it and go for something, then the question is why? He is the one to answer the question, not us. For but, us, as far as you're concerned, yes, he has taken his decision. And remember, like I said, after he left, after Joel left, Many other people stayed on and came back to the party and more are coming to join us. Mm -hmm. Very soon you hear big stories coming out. So we are not uh, weeping over this now. We are past that level. Well, Prof, doesn't that in any way suggest to you, and because there are those who will be wondering, if this is happening in the NNPP when people have the tickets and they leave, then maybe it's not a party for me. Maybe there are some things happening within the party that the party is not letting anyone know. You see, the trouble is that you are only looking at only a small part of the story. What is happening in other political parties today? The, 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 the so-called leading political parties, what is happening to them? They are there. They, some of them are serving governors, but they have refused to be part of the campaign organization of their presidential candidate. They have refused to be part of anything. And they are not keeping quiet. They are shouting. They are even are challenging the party, if you like. Suspend me, if you like or remove me from the party. And therefore, it's a sufficient problem there. We don't have that kind of problem in our party. Mm. So if one person or two people leave, it strengthens our base because it's better for them to leave early enough than to leave at a time when we expect we are planning for presidential election and then they leave that. By that time, it will be worse. Mm. So I think it's better now. But the, the question then is, I mean, in these other parties that you're talking about, we don't have candidates who have already become candidates leave the party to go elsewhere. Candidates leaving, but you have serving governors who are fighting inside, deadly. And that is, is it better? Is it not better for someone to leave and leave you alone than to be fighting inside the party with you? Or revealing top secrets, discussions that have been held just recently. Yeah, that is the worst way to run a party. Okay, so in your opinion now, for those who are still members of the party, uh, what would you be telling them? Because there, there may be... Uh, those who have left may be like precedents to those who, who return, who are still within the system of the party. What would you want to tell those who may be contemplating after getting the tickets of the party as candidates to leave? What would you want to tell them? Well, I think our focus, mainly one, is that um, by right, the party must have representation in all these states. Now, where our own candidates who have been screened and uh, you know we went through the primaries and then whose name were legitimately submitted to INEC and they refused to continue with the process like i said we are exploring every method every way every channel to ensure that we don't lose i'm repeating this for the second time uh, what is important like i said to chamberlain that uh, we don't want to sit down and then continue agonizing because one person or two people have left the party. I say thousands are coming into the party daily. And uh, you will see it very soon. And you will be surprised. You will be shocked. Because the NMPP is a serious party. It's a party that offers hope to this country today. 
In fact, because we anticipated that these parties are going to the, into various series of crises, some of them are manageable, that we didn't want to be there. Senator Rabi Musa Konkoso was a member of the PDP, a strong member, a pillar of the party. He was a member of the BOT, but he left the party for an MPP. There must be something he saw coming. So wait, is he not going to be working for the PDP presidential candidate at Tiko Abubakar? Who? Rabi, uh, Raju Rabi Kwankoso. Work for who? Work for the PDP. Oh. Because there's word out there that eventually he will go ahead and strengthen the PDP itself. Who will work for who? I can't understand. You know, the question sometimes is highly sophisticated. Let me, can you back in to, into <laughs> simple well, way? Let sophisticated me. about that. Yeah. Are you telling us now that uh, Elijah Rabi Kwankosu will not be working for the PDP at the end of the day? So you mean that uh, we will collapse our party and then start uh, shopping for another presidential candidate? You think it's possible now? Well, we did ask at the same time, too, if Malam Shakara was going to stay with NMPP when he moved from APC to NMPP. And they said, yes, that was the case. But today we know what has happened, so it's not out of place to ask again this kind of question. But you, you, have, to, you have to look at the... You know, that way you're talking about individually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're talking about a political party with a presidential candidate with... Yeah, I'm talking about the individual. Yeah, sorry? The, the presidential candidate of NMPP. Yes, he is now, but he is a property of the party, mm -hmm. and then he has a running mate. And then the party is for him. He is the national leader of the party. And then he, we also have a governorship candidate nationwide. We have a, a, a senators right, nationwide. We have a House of Representatives, House of Assembly, a full complement of all elements for the election of 2023. Then suddenly we have take this and put it in another basket. Is that correct? So he is not going to work for the PDP in any okay, category no, no, at any point for this general elections. I think for now our attention is focused on 2023 elections. In what capacity? Contesting that election, presidential, of course. and then across board. Of course. And uh, you know, uh, you see, there's something we realize. That uh, suddenly, first they said that NNPP well, it was nothing. Uh, Concoso, they took him for granted because he was in the party. If they needed him to serve their purpose, they shouldn't have allowed him to leave the party in the first place. They were here in this country. When, he, when we were trying to form the national movement, they were watching us. They knew that something would happen, but nobody said, look, don't allow this thing to go this far. They allowed it to go this far. We went to national movement. We went to NMPP. We, 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 we developed the party to a standard higher than all the other political parties by this time. All the parties did not develop this strength within a period of four months, five months, six months. So now, having gotten a, everything ready for election, now the fear is gripping people. Now they are saying that, no, I think he is going to give to APC, go to PDP, go to X. Anything is being said, everything is being said. Who is afraid of Honkoso? There must be somebody who is afraid of him. Why can't he stand on his own and fight this election and win this election? What is different? What are the others? going to offer better than him. Remember, sir, when the last time I came here, we said the very reason why we formed the national movement and subsequently merged with the NMPP was to for two things, mainly to rescue our country and to save democracy. And we said that the state of the nation, economically, security-wise, everything has risen to raise concern for us now and the future. And we should not sit down in our homes and begin to cry and complain. We should do something about it. And that's how we come up with this uh, national movement. Now, as of last year, by this time, we, have not, we didn't even learn the national movement. Now we did. We, uh, we didn't do the merger. We did. We did not build the party. We did. Now, everything has done, we done is very unusual, unprecedented to build a party with a short period like we have done. So why, why can't they leave us alone? Let them join us. Those who want to join us, let them join us also. Has the presidential candidate of the PDP mm. reached out to Malam Rabi Shekharao? Um. Sorry, Malam Rabi <laughs> <laughs> I think I will investigate what is happening between Malam Rabi and uh, Ibrahim Shekharao. Uh, well, he has already appointed Ibrahim Shekharao as one of his advisors. So I think that... Yeah, but, but has he reached out to uh, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. No, you're the chairman of the party. You should know. Oh, you say reaching out now. You didn't say reaching the party. You say reaching the presidential candidate. Oh, a presidential candidate can also reach a presidential candidate. It's normal. 
No, good to talk. I mean, reaching out with a view to getting him on his side, on the PDP side, to work with okay, the PDP. Okay, why can't we call... Uh, 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 no, that's a different matter. Mm. But has he reached out to him? Why can't... Uh, well, I said, I don't know what he has done. Then. Okay, so has the party... Has they reached out to the party through you? Well, maybe they were taking their time. They will do that. By that time, we have already won the elections. I so do you have any communication from the party, the PDP, to NMPP to work together? No, not that I know. Not what that. about the APC? Not that I know. Is the NMPP presidential candidates going to campaign in different parts of this country? Of course, absolutely, 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 absolutely. Already he has started. Uh, for example, like, you know, there are virtually most of the state now, at least over a... 60% or 70% has visited them. And uh, these are not campaign period, but to visit people, to commiserate with families and uh, communities who have lost one thing or the other, and uh, to re-establish contact, to open offices. And uh, so that I think the idea he, will, he came up with, or we came up with, was to make sure that you don't wait until during campaign you go to a community and ask for a vote. They will say, why are you all these years? So that's why this concept came up. And it was very good, and he has been visiting most of the states of the Federation, and he wow. continues before we finally launch our campaign. So he will definitely be on the ballot. So yes, sir. Sure. What, what is um, the beyond? I mean, you, you've heard this several times. In terms of your analogy, I know the NMPP always says that they are looking strategically. They're mm. looking at the numbers to see where their strength and their weaknesses lie. Mm. So what gives you the confidence now because things change over time? What is it that you see now that gives the party the confidence that they will clinch the presidential uh, victory? Well, one is the level of acceptance of the party. First and foremost, even before we came to this point, we didn't start this project with this procrastination, with doubts in our mind, with, you know, you know like uh, we were not sure what we are doing. We knew what we were doing. We, we anticipated all these issues that we are facing today. And uh, like we said, there was time Nigeria felt that there was not going to be any alternative to what you have on the ground. And we felt that there must be an alternative. Nigerians must be given an option, you know, a substitute to what is happening. Tell me, with all the things that is going on the ground, now, ordinarily, during campaign, people will say, OK, tell us what we are going to do for us. Yeah, in the coming elections. But the question Nigeria are going to ask this time around now is not what oh. you are going to do for us. First and foremost, they ask, what have you done before? Yeah. Uh -huh. They will know what you have done or what you are doing before they can even ask what you have, uh, we are going to do ahead. Which is which they need to look at people's pedigree. What are they bringing to the table? So that, that's in order. But as we wind down now, um, you, you tease the media. You know the media loves big story. You said well, there's a big story that is going to happen within the NMPP. Yes. What, what can that be? We'll let you know shortly, because uh, 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 we are working behind the scenes. There are many Nigerians who are willing and ready to come to, Nigeria, to our party, and they will change the dynamics completely. So are they going to be in the mold of what? A former governor, or a current governor, you or will, a former you, president? You will, be, you will be among the first to hear when the time comes. No, no not naming the person, uh, but in the category of this big story, that one what, is, what is it like? We to are be? going to keep that to our chest for now. No, Tell not naming the names, but yeah. the category Even of the persons category, that are coming as, in. As political, a politician, we cannot do that. We cannot, uh, so how do we do this big story, Prof, then? <laughs> if you know, you, you are looking for a that. leakage from me, and you won't get it. Prof. <laughs> 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 Professor Rafael Kali is the National Chairman of NMPP. Thank you for coming, and we wish you a party. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.